people fall in love, make love, and have babies. Babies grow at great speeds. For instance, say you were a toddler in the 80s. By now, you're probably working in a job that gives you brain freeze, gagging for a pay increase, scrabbling for cash enough in order to ensure you can assuredly procure for your family its basic needs. Life. It's a hard slog, but you're a fighter. You've made it to middle age, at least. Even if it does sort of feel like increasingly you waste a lot of days and weeks, but making reasonable money from what you're good at, from the thing you most love, from what best corresponds with your nature, please. It sounds like the stuff of some make-believes. We aren't all special. Gold doesn't pave the streets. When you heard the universities had opted to raise their fees, it made you want to cry like a two-year-old who got tripped and grazed his knees. And in any case, the girl ain't even going to get a place if she doesn't get the grades she needs. Bright kids should be angling for A's and B's. Instead, what's this? Jeez Louise. Report cards filling up with ADHDs and E's. Doctor, doctor, I have a trepidation. My daughter doesn't really match with education. You, sir, need a batch of medication. From here on in, it's just damage limitation. Two people fall in love and make love, thus producing a princess, a little madam. My point being, the life and death cycle of humans begins with a fit of passion. Surely then we should all be splintering the atom, trying to innovate a different pattern, a system not explicitly constructed to render creativity inexplicably distant, conspicuously absent. People fall in love, make love and have babies, thus providing hard proof that miracles can happen, which is good to know because that's what we all are going to need if we're to reinvigorate the listless interactions currently driving entire classrooms to dribbling distraction. Isn't it true that children's brains are predisposed towards vigorous expansion? It seems a pinch peculiar to pickle them like Branston, to take their curiosities and cram them into standardised jars. Our kids are reared like battery hen chicks for individualist conformity, the very worst of both worlds swivelling in tandem. And when they're grown, we throw them off a cliff into a chasm. And what about the teachers? Helplessly afflicting stupefaction on the kids in their command of poor things. No, it isn't any of their fault if the system gives them no scope for wisdom and acts as if it thinks them as ignorant as plankton. Leave it to the drizzle of indifference to dampen any lingering scraps of their natural born instincts for independent action. People fall in love. It's an age-old urge. In a bid to be saved, souls merge. Bravely giving up the safety of their well-defined outlines to desire's melting pots, they collaboratively tie themselves in knots. And the odds are firmly on that pretty soon they'll be hitting Google up for baby names and buying lots of tiny velvet frocks, as well as flat pack IKEA climbing frames and cots. The riddle then, naturally submitted for dismantling, has to be exactly what planet will this infant be inhabiting? In precisely which paradigmatic realms will this little one be languishing? The world is in crisis. All its resources due to pillaging are dwindling, withering, vanishing. We've been indiscriminately gambling on destiny for too long. And now disaster isn't imminent. It's part of our immediate predicament. It's happening. The fact is, if we are to avert the fatal fate towards which we giddily are galloping, we'll need to ease up on the systematic shackling of free thought, experimentation, originality. Okay, if I might, I think I'd like to finish off by reeling off a short list of applicable platitudes. The truth is in the seeking. We are what we eat, as is the future we are feeding. Learning comes to infants as instinctively as sleeping. Every single instant is inimitably fleeting, thus this and every instant is for seizing, for gripping and for squeezing. Of course it's all just a little piece of history repeating that goes without whispering or shrieking, scribbling or chirruping or tweeting, but surely with a little bit of innovative scheming we could rustle up some rituals that enrich the thing with meaning. We haven't got to reinvent the principles of wheeling, 
We only need to tweak our definitions of succeeding. We only need to listen to our hearts and synchronize our visions of tomorrow with the rhythms that they're beating. We only need to do what people do and fall in love with ourselves. We human beings are unique in our productive versatility of feeling. We do crazy things like writing symphonies and reading. Our realities are moulded by the fictions we believe in. That's what makes us different from a gibbon or a tree chimp, a kitten or a sleek mink, a chicken or a sea shrimp. Everything hinges on our capacity to dream. Anyway, you get the picture. There's some things we need to rethink.